Welcome back, and thank you for joining for another whiskey review. I'm your host, Mike, and I have a bottle that I've been excited to bring you for quite some time since the moment I picked it up. That is the Balvini single barrel, 25 years old. Bang. 47.8% ABV, very consistent with the rest of the single barrel series. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the Balvini Single Barrel Series, it is always, or these whiskeys are always at the 47.8% ABV. They have a 12 year old. They used to have a 15 year old, which was an incredible whiskey. And they don't make the 15 year old anymore. So now they do a 15 year old sherry cask, which isn't actually a single barrel, but that's a story for another time. But we're talking today about the 25 year old single barrel X bourbon cast matured. This, for any of you who have a similar bottle, is bottle number 6006. Excuse me, cast number 6006. Bottle number 83. See that right there, hopefully. Now, a nice thing with the Balvini in the single barrel series, they will always put the in the cast date, so when it was distilled and put into a cask for maturation, and then the date that they bottled it or took it out of the cask. So, what has always been um, something that I really liked about this series was a lot of times you would get older whiskeys. Um, usually the 15 year old single barrel was 15 years old, you know, in eight months or nine months. Sometimes you get a 16 year old, but in general, you got one that was, you know, probably right around 16 years old. So you got a little bit more bang for your buck as far as the age statement that was on the bottle itself. Now this one, a big treat. This was put into the cask and I have to say this, in the UK, they put the day of the month first, then the month, then the year, to where here in the States, we do the month, the day, then the year. So I'm gonna read to you the way it says on the bottle, then I'll explain. This is put into the cask on 1-6 of 1989, which means this, on the first day of June in 1989. It was put into a bottle on the 24th day of May 2018, which means this is technically a 28 year old whiskey. More specifically, it is seven days shy of being 29 years old. Even though it does say 25 years on the barrel, you see the bottling date, you see the put in the cast date right there. Hopefully you can make that out. If you guys can't, I'll try to take a picture of it, put a little thumbnail or something so you guys can check it out. So this will actually be the oldest whiskey I brought to you thus far on this, on this YouTube channel. Um, Balvini, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the distillery, Speyside Distillery, um, owned by William Grant & Sons, the same company that owns Glenfiddich. So uh, this is the higher end version of their whiskeys. Um, the Glenfiddich is their basic version, and then the Balvini is the version um, that's slightly more upscaled. And again, this is in, aged in traditional oak. Ex-American bourbon traditional oak. Now, what does traditional oak mean? It means it's a refill. Um, how the barrels work, they will use them to make bourbon, the American oak barrels. Then they'll ship them over to Scotland. And then they'll use it one time for a finishing or for maybe a first fill type bottling. And that's what they'll call it. They'll call it a first fill bottling. After that, second fill, third fill, down the line is a refill or a traditional cask. Now, I've heard some people say that traditional cask means the second fill, but I know other people have different opinions about that, and I'm not exactly sure how Balvini looks at that, and all I could find on the website was simply that it indeed was a refill cask. I don't know if it was the second refill, I don't know if it was the third. Having said that, I'm just excited to get into this whiskey. Again, technically a 28-year-old whiskey, a whiskey that uh, I have had some of. You can see where the fill level is, just below the label right here. I bought it probably two months ago, opened it right away, tried to let it oxidize some, and I've had a few small sips to try to get my tasting notes down, and we'll see where we're at with it. All right, guys, so this is natural color. Not all Balvinis are, but the single barrel series, I believe is. If I'm wrong, guys, let me know. I'm going to give it a quick swirl around the glass. 
See what kind of legs we're getting here? They don't, they don't wait a whole long time to come down. And when they come down, they're kind of sporadic. The 47.8% ABV. Now that is a higher ABV, but it is not a cast strength. Just want to make that clear. 47.8 is decently high, but again, not cast strength. So not a cast strength whiskey, but a high ABV whiskey. And again, an ABV that pretty much all the single barrel series from Balvini is usually bottled at. Okay, so let's see what we think as far as the smell. That's a rich smell. Rich honey, rich vanilla. Man. Things that I get from a lot of Albini's. Um, honey, vanilla, distillery characteristics, along with uh, orange, zesty orange. Now, the zest from the orange isn't um, in the forefront. It's very vanilla, very honeyed forward. Very sweet, sweet honey forward. Very rich, sweet honey and rich, sweet vanilla. But the orange is in the background. Um, I brought you guys a, um, a ton 1509, I think it was batch four, if I'm not mistaken. And that was a pretty oaky whiskey, um, where the good amount of oak, like a toasted oak to it, but not as oaky as that, um, ton 1509 batch four, for, for whatever reason. You'd almost think the 25 year old would be oakier, but, um, and it is oaky, but not quite as oaky as that Balvenie ton 1509. And you know, not a, t not a huge profile as far as smells. Um, vanilla and honey, super rich, super full, super lush, but not five or six different uh, smells as far as on the nose, at least neat. So in that way, it's, it's kind of a narrow focus as far as the whiskey itself, but those flavors are incredible. So if you like the Balvini for the honey and the vanilla, you know, just up to give you give this one a try. First sip time. Mm. That honey is so sweet, and it is so rich, and it is just so dense of vanilla and honey. Just incredible richness of those two flavors. Now, those are flavors that I have described, whiskeys, or I've described the flavor of whiskey with vanilla and honey before. I don't know, no I do know. They, I have never had as rich of a vanilla honey taste as I do in this Balvenie 25 year old single barrel, never. And after almost 29 years in the cask, you'd figure you have some bitterness or some tannins or something. Man, it is just clean and smooth. Wow. That is just an incredible mouth coating taste that is still just right there on the side of the jaw, just spewing out the vanilla and the honey. Incredible. Now, you might be saying to yourself, there's no way I would pay, at least here in the States, just under $600 for a whiskey that doesn't, is so singular as far as its notes. Two, three different type of flavors. And I get that. If you want a complex whiskey, this isn't it. If you want a true Valvini bourbon cast matured whiskey where everything else is stripped away, no finishings, which Balvini is pretty famous for, especially the sherry finishing. If you just want the pure distillery characteristic, this has got to be as close as you possibly can get from Balvini. Just incredible. Now, I added a little bit of water, the uh, Fiji water. I uh, threw a couple drops in there. I went with the eyedropper because I wanted to be very precise with this one. Is those of you who watch a few of my reviews would know, I usually just use the cap, throw it in there, 
willy-nilly about it. This time, because older whiskeys can unravel fairly easily, I just wanted to put a drop or two in there. It's almost world round. See what else I'm picking up here? If anything else at all. With water, the orange is more noticeable on the nose. I got a little bit of that orange zest initially. Not so much on the palate, but definitely on the nose, neat. But it's, it's a lot more noticeable once you throw a little bit of water in there. The, the orange zest is up. The vanilla and the honey is still right there. But the, the orange zest almost now became equal footing with the vanilla and the honey to go along to kind of encompass the three flavors that you mainly get out of this whiskey. Yeah, that's really, with water, that's all only real difference I would say that it made. Just simply brought out the zesty orange a little bit more, which is fine with me. I guess I would prefer it probably, as far as the nose goes, I'd prefer it neat, but to each their own. If you like a little bit more of the citrus flavors on the nose, put a couple drops of water in there and see what you think. Second time on the palate. Maybe I didn't put enough water in because that tastes exactly like it did. <laughs> Neat, exactly. Sweet, sweet honey. Candied vanilla, which candied is a flavor that, or a description of a flavor that I rarely say with any scotch, maybe four or five. And never vanilla, but a candied vanilla. And then, actually with water, there's a bit, there's, a, there's some nice spice to it that initially was not getting neat. So, I will say this. Initially I said it's about the same, neat or with water. There is a bit more spice, good amount more spice when you have the water in there. Definitely on the aftertaste. Not, not initially, but after you swallow, you get that nice spice. Now, I'm a big fan of Balvini. Maybe you are too. Maybe you don't have the money to buy the 25 year old single barrel. Having said that, I do think if you can get your hands on the old 15 year old single barrel, that probably brings you 80, 85% of what this bottle has to offer. Now, oddly enough, I do, I always got more fruits out of the 15 year old single barrel and I don't get a whole lot of fruits here aside from just the orange. So that is a little different. But just the vanilla and the honey are so much richer in this version than they were in the 15 year old. It's a similar whiskey, but the things that are highlighted about it are just different. I'm trying to give you a, a good analogy. Um, I'm already thinking of one off the top of my head. So I'll just say it's an incredible dram. It's an incredible whiskey. You can get your hands on it. This is a whiskey that's also sort of subtle. Um, I've had, these, had this in a couple different settings. I just brought it over to my friend's house. We had a drink or two, and I really didn't get the same richness from it when I was in um, an environment that wasn't really controlled, meaning it wasn't really um, the right temperature. You know, someone um, out back was smoking a cigarette. Some of that was kind of in the air, kind of put off the experience to some degree. But this is really a whiskey you need to sit down in a controlled environment and take your time with <clears throat> because it does only have a narrow band as far as the flavors you pick up and you really need to appreciate them to appreciate this whiskey. Anyway, I'm gonna give it a score of a 93 out of 100. It's an extremely good whiskey, um, probably overpriced. I miss the 15 year old single barrel. Uh, the 25 year old is something that I think I would like to keep on my bar on a regular basis, but we'll see how long it's available. Um, I saw online that it was uh, discontinued, at least the Master of Malt. But I know here in Central Ohio, it's been making the rounds. So I might pick up another bottle before they're gone. Something to savor. I plan on having this bottle, which again, has a pretty high fill level for a good number of years going forward. If you guys have tried this, especially cast number 6006, which seems unlikely, but if you have, let me know. Love to hear in the comments section. Until next time, I wanna thank you for joining me for another whiskey review. And as always, happy drinking.